Here we have a presentation about fiscal resources. In our field, the manager must plan, allocate, control, report, and evaluate fiscal resources. Fiscal resources. So managing economic resources of a recreation, parks, and leisure service organization is a very critical aspect of their job, of the agency, and of the services and facilities provided. There are some similarities between profit and non-for-profit organizations in our field. They're both concerned with where resources are used. They look at seeking to maximize operating efficiency, distributions of goods and services, ensuring that they are responsible with their financial obligations. They can stay financially viable and stay afloat. Look at it, they usually have a limited pool of resources and resource providers, and some may charge fees for services. Here specifically, let's look at the financial differences between profit and non-for-profit non organizations. In for-profit organizations or commercial enterprises, we generate income through producing and selling goods and services and from investments. We're gonna to seek to maximize revenues and minimize cost. And finally, we're going to be accountable to shareholders or people that will benefit from us increasing our revenue and minimizing cost. Now let's look at the nonprofit organization. Here we have internal funding and external sources of support. To maintain our legal and tax status, we must demonstrate where we get our external funds. This includes things like fundraising and development as they're very important to the overall viability of the nonprofit organization. To look at this in a different way, we can look at the philosophical distinction with, with the nonprofit organization. So in nonprofits, we're looking at a private voluntary organization where our primary aim is to provide social welfare services and achieve multiple goals most of the time. So we're not looking at any profit-driven motives here. The manager's goal in the nonprofit is to ensure the operations or delivery of social benefits. So again, we're moving away from the manager's goal being profit. The secondary goal is to maintain liquidity and solvency and formulate a budget. So basically make sure, make sure we can meet our bills and make sure that we can continue operating. For the profit and nonprofit agencies, we can get revenue in different ways. We can do fees and charges for services, which is typical in a profit organization. We can get, at, get we can look at getting tax allocations or grants. We can look at bond programs, donations, and investments. Now let's look at the budget. It's a statement that allows organizations to plan and control their resources for a specific period of time. So oftentimes the budget is stated in dollars, but sometimes it can look at work hours, units of production, or other descriptive or measurable units for resources. The budget provides some very specific information. It can look at resources of an organization, what we have, how we acquire resources and how resources are expended, what services we're providing. And it's important to remember, it's not a static document to say, it's not going to just be rigid. There are things that can and will change. And I like to think of it as a living dynamic document. Overall, the budget represents the manager's ability to estimate or predict how resources of an organization are going to be acquired or expended. Let's look at some of the advantages of using a budget. Some of these will probably make sense, right? The budget allows a manager to organize the resources in a systematic fashion. It requires a manager to plan for anticipated work and expenses, and it allows the manager to develop work schedules and work around goals for the organization. It can also serve as a reference for the manager and subordinates to help clarify or support decisions. Do we have the budget for this? Did we plan for this? It allows the manager to communicate with subordinates and coordinate activities in monetary terms. This is what we have budgeted. This is what we have to work with. 
It can promote standardization within financial operations, so everybody's on the same page. It provides legislative bodies with necessary information for evaluation of programs and services. Your budget really is a reflection of what you're going to do. In a public sector, the budget provides taxpayers with explanations on how resources are produced, acquired, and expended. Again, the same thing with legislative bodies. It shows what you're doing with your resources. And finally, the budget serves as a point of reference, a guideline or measuring device by which you can see if you're going to be successful or if you're doing the right thing. We can look at the budget process in three basic steps. The first step would be develop a budget plan in terms of dollars that anticipates, anticipates the future direction and needs of the organization. Then we can coordinate dollar estimates into a well-balanced program of service listing. And then we can compare actual performance with our estimated balance related to our programs, facilities, and things we've spent money on. Managers plan and budget for the future. So this should include things like inflation, a shift in emphasis area or direction, effects of new programs or services, and any adjustment to revenues or expenses that may, that may incur. The budget cycle is a period of time over which may cover an entire year of operation with an organization. So as they plan for the future, they need to consider that. You know, we call this a fiscal year. For example, some fiscal years are January 1 to December 31st. Other ones, like the United States government, their fiscal year is July 1 to June 30th. So these can be, uh, inter these can be different among organizations. We're going to briefly talk about four different types of budgets. The zero-based budget, the line item budget, the program budget, and the performance-based budget. The light item budget is an object classification design. It's the oldest form of budgeting, and you've probably seen a lot of examples of these. I would encourage you to look online and just type in in a search engine line item budget and get a few different examples. These are the most popular budget design, I think, overall. Next, you can, do, you can use a program budget, and this budget looks at outcomes rather than cost. So we're thinking about what is our outcome that we want to achieve, and then we build up costs from there. Whereas a line item is looking at this cost plus that cost plus the third cost is this much. Whereas a program is saying, I want to achieve this outcome, and let's see what cost from the bottom up. Then we can look at performance-based budgeting. It's a mechanism by where organization breaks down the activities into detailed subunits. And the purpose is to determine specific cost of each unit. So how much does it cost to run youth programs? How much does it cost to run uh, maintenance for ball fields? How much does it cost to run administrative tasks and all that kind of stuff? Then we could use, look at the zero-based budget, and this is more of a process than it is specifically a budget. But then we just look at overall starting from zero each year or each budget cycle. So the organization is required to justify the total request for funds from a base zero. What do you need to get by? Not necessarily what did you use last year, and we're going to mimic that. Overall, I would encourage you to do a quick internet search of each type of budget to get an idea of what they look like. In general, the budget procedures are broken down into four parts. The budget preparation, which, uh, you know, getting a lot of resources in to begin that process. The budget design, so we're looking at zero base, performance base, whatever it may be. The budget presentation, where you get approval from uh, your supervisor or board of directors. And the implementation, so that's the facilitation of the expenditures and a revenue collection process related to the budget. Let's look at governing board approval or board of directors approval. In general, the manager is expected to stay within whatever limitation is in place regarding the money for each given program. To add or transfer funds out of that program, they must make a request, a formal request. So transfers within the program can be done uh, ongoing, but to move money to different accounts or different programs needs specific approval. So let's talk about expending funds, and there's various methods of expending funds. 
you got the normal methods such as you know paying your bills or you know getting supplies and stuff like that overall you want to make sure you have things in uh, things in place controls to eliminate any dis any dishonesty and expenditure of funds so overall you think about this you want to get the greatest value for the least amount of money when you're buying supplies or paying for services or whatever it may be Usually there's procedures set by governing board or by the state as far as legal parameters. But basically you want to make sure there's safeguards in place so that the funds or the resources are not misused. Operating expenditures are what I like to think about as fiscal year expenditures. These are expenditures that are going to happen year after year after year. On They're ongoing overall. So we think about personnel services, um, full-time, temporary, and seasonal staff. So th these are things that are going to happen year in and year out. Materials we'll need. Think about paper for the paper, copier, and things like that. Uh, supplies and other services. Again, this is something that's going to happen year after year. It's ongoing. Then we can look at, ex at capital expenses. And these are large pros large projects, excuse me, large projects and are extremely costly. These can be things like land acquisition or building construction, but these are large things that are going to take over a year to do as far as, um, you know, procure and have money set aside and things of like things like that. And they're also long standing things. Like once you buy land, you're not going to have to keep buying the same land, right? Once you have a building, uh, you pay for it and you may take 20 years to pay it off, but you're not going to have to buy another building and buy another building year in and year out. Next, let's look at control. So a couple of different ways we can look at this is accounting, and we'll talk about two types of accounting here in just a second. And we must look at how the organization can record collection of revenue and expenditure of funds. So we're gonna look at accounting, right? We wanna classify and record financial transactions within the organization and between organization and other agencies. Again, accounting. We like to look at accounting in two different ways. We have cost accounting and accrual accounting. Cost, cost accounting is evolved as a result of growth of program and performance budget, budgets. They report of expenditures broken down into function, program, or specific activities. The manager is able to view expenditures within each unit, so it makes it easy to look at. Uh, there's an easy method to compare costs and benefits. Then we look at accrual accounting. This is a standard method used in most recreation, parks, and leisure services organizations. It's a system of monthly or regularly scheduled statements of expenditures. So think of it like, you know, you get a monthly statement with your bank. There's a general ledger that assists the manager in maintaining control of the budget. And there's computer software packages to give us reports. So overall, accrual accounting is the most common one in parks, recreation, services, uh, and sport industries as well. To summarize, we look at the budget and financial process as a complete package. It's intended to give the manager a financial plan to follow and a system in place for checks and balances. A good manager is the best assurance for a good plan, procedures, and control. Remember, they're the gatekeeper. We can look at budgets in two different ways of operating and capital, whereas operating is the annual or the fiscal year budget, and capital is large project, large expense budget. Then overall, we look at the budget process as four different ways. We look at preparation, design, presentation, Im implementation, and control. That concludes our presentation on fiscal resources.